Just like Peter, I want to go far. That's all I remember. That's that audio adrenaline song. Is Walk it? on the water. Yes. I only really know. Remember the hook. Nah, I don't barely remember that. I kind of failed myself today. Didn't look it up. <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? This is Joaquin along with Jay. And this is the Overflow Podcast at thisisoutcry.com. And in we, the background, we have a uh, we have uh, a special guest, we have a but special guest listening in. He's doing he's doing some research he's work, so his own work. So let's uh, give a shout out to our buddy who we've renamed for the summer. For the summer, his name is Coconut Juice. <laughs> Coconut Juice. <laughs> we need a uh, we need one of those clap tracks. Yeah, Coconut Juice is uh, in the background. Uh, he'll be keeping his mouth closed, Do- doing what he's always doing. What? Working on something new. Working on something new. We'll see. Uh, we should be working on getting us some food, but that's a whole nother here or there. All things for the kingdom. <laughs> Even food. So, yes. <laughs> well, you know, I grew up Baptist and we love to eat. So <laughs> with that being said, so man, what's up? How's your week been? Week's been good. Been, been good week? It's not, been good. It's been good. Not Not too rough at work? I think it's been no, a little no. Ready for work. It's you're, been you're, ready, you're ready for vacation. You're it's, ready for like two or three days of like nothing. I'm ready for, I'm ready for two or three months. <laughs> it's um, it's been rough at work, but nothing that me talking bad or complaining is going to change. Right. So there's no. It's been good. <laughs> honestly, I really don't care. But um, <laughs> so who cares if you complain? All right. Well, for me, work is work has been all right. Well, like you know, we've had some kind of dumb stuff happening. Well, whatever's. So uh, man, we had a. Uh, pretty, it's been a pretty interesting week. Um, we had the concert last Saturday. Yeah, it yeah, it was interesting. It um, was, it was, it was funny know, to me. It wasn't funny. It was disheartening a little. No, no, no. no I, I gave that to God. Um, it was interesting to me, and I know Juice is in the background, but he can probably say something about this also. But it was interesting to me to see. Um, a lot of artists and industry people that came by, like to support. I thought that was pretty dope. Right, of course, I'm gonna put my cynical hat on, <laughs> and <laughs> I just did the motion like I'm putting my cynical hat on. Yeah, it's funny how you do all these things that like people no, can see. Man, no can see. We got to work on that. I got an idea, but anyway, so yeah, I'm putting my little cynical. I'm I'm still doing the motion. My cynical hat on. Yeah, they 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 came to support or be seen. <laughs> By, by some of the industry people. No, they came. You know, I say that because All right, cynical hat off. I say support because the friendships that we have, um, as far as Juice and I and and the artists that oh, were there, okay, yeah, you got like that. no, no, no. But they they didn't have they did not have to pay, right? Right. But since it was a fundraiser, right? You know, to help. So they they like, went ahead and they, get, they went. They paid they some, some. Some of them paid extra. Grab some money. Right. Some of them paid extra. Nice. You know. So I thought. I thought that was. I thought that was no, pretty cool. dope. That's cool. Yeah. The like. I guess the actual concert music part was alright. It was a little. I'll say it was a little disappointing because not a whole lot of people showed up. And so I will. I will say that was a little disappointing. You know, we. Um, it was but, crazy because like, it's it's an Atlanta thing, man. You know. You know what. I say that all the time, but I am, I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I'm, I'm just kind of tired of the, this also of saying that all the time. Like, you know, it's like, it's almost like we excuse it. No, no. It's you know, just, it's almost, it's almost it's, like, it's, it's not to excuse it. It's to, it's to, it's to, it's to, it's to explain it. It's to explain it because it's, it's an Atlanta, it's an Atlanta thing. Like people uh, here just don't, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be real raw right now. And it's not even real raw Atl- or real roar. Real raw. <laughs> it's not even. It's it's not an Atlanta thing. This is is an Atlanta thing only. But like real talk, real talk. If it's not like, if you're not bringing out like a huge a, name, a huge name, right? Like people won't make the effort, right? Right. They won't. Hey, they they, they won't genre, make the art. Regardless yeah. of genre, if you're not pu- pulling out the big guns, yeah. Then so maybe we should like falsely advertise the big guns. That's and they lying. Just, and then just say, "Oh, they didn't show up." That's lying. <laughs> All right. See, that's why we have Jay because <laughs> I will be a little unethical if I have to. For Jesus, <laughs> put like a put real big Gavi, and then under his name put music 
at this guy's event. <laughs> you didn't read the fine print. It said that his music will his be music here. His music will be there. Or like, like the artist's name, Lecrae. Might or might not be there. <laughs> might or might not be there. Lecrae. Music will be, sp- will be spun by DJ 412. <laughs> Lecrae's music will be played. Uh, you know, but... It's uh, like real, see? See? like real talk. Like if if it's not like if it's not a big artist, right? If it's not a big artist, like you know, you yeah. you won't really. Yeah, it's and then and then even then even then that's iffy, right? Even then that's the, iffy. Yeah, I mean it, it depends. It depends, but eh, whatever's we live, yeah. we it's, learn, we move on. It's it's the market. It's the market. I'm not. So that leads us. That leads us or, or leaps us right into Atlanta Fest, which is coming up. In June, June, June sixteenth through eighteenth. I never get the dates right. You always, you always push it. July. You always push I'm it back to July. Them to July. Maybe next year they'll do it in yeah, July. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them when I meet them. I'll be like, you guys need to do it in July because that's when I think it should be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember June but for the life. June sixteenth through eighteenth. June sixteenth through eighteenth is Atlanta have Fest. Atlanta Fest with uh, now. I'm. Much of I have to clarify. I have to clarify because I've been getting. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of messages like DMs on Instagram, right. What we're doing, right, as far as Atlanta Fest is concerned, is we're just helping them promote and put the word out there because Atlanta Fest has been gone for like two or three years, and this is his first time back. Correct. So we're, we're not we're not involved. We're not, we're not doing anything. We don't have a stage. There's no. What was it? Um. Oh man, he's gonna have to talk now. Juice. What was it called? What was our stage called? Hip hop. What? Oh, hip hop rev- hip hop revival. Sorry, I'm, wow. the Juice, thing is that if, if you didn't pick that up, Juice was incredulous. <laughs> the thing, the thing is that I thought it was Red Letter Revival only. All right, hip hop revival, revival will not be will not at Atlanta Fest. An appearance. This now year. we can't speak for Juice. This year. We can't speak for Juice hijacking a stage. That's on him. Coconut Juice might hijack a stage. He he just he just might. And that's but that's on him. He so, just might. So don't. If you come to Atlanta Fest, bring coconuts to throw at coconut juice when he's on stage. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> he he just might because to be like to be real honest, to be real honest, he has juice hijacking the stage is what got us into Creation Fest. So, but, we're, but we're already in Atlanta Fest. We don't need. No, but I'm just any, I'm just saying. I'm not putting it any, out there. That's that's what made them. Or we, or we do. That's anyway. what that's that, that's what made them see. Hey, we we need this at right, these festivals. So, Hey, so the the point is, you should come to Atlanta Fest to come see to Atlanta if, Fest. if Juice is gonna, you know, coconut juice is gonna, <laughs> hijack, a stage juice is gonna hijack a stage. July sixteenth through eighteenth, right? July, June, June. You I said July. July now. See, I, uh, even I got you thinking June sixteenth through eighteenth. We're gonna have Atlanta Fest. Atlanta, Atlanta Fest, Fest is back. Is gonna got be a in Atlanta. Big lineup, twenty five plus artists, right? And I think NF is coming down. Toby right, Mac. Young Noah's coming down. Toby Mac is going to be a part of it. You know, he's... I'm a big Toby Mac fan, so I'm kind of excited to see Okay, him. and another segue, talking about Toby Mac. No, nah, I don't want to talk about this. I have to because give was... props oh. to my amazing and awesome wife who was able to get us tickets to the DC Talk reunion cruise. Nice. So you know what I'm going to be giving you, right? <laughs> I'm going to be giving you my DC Talk Jesus Freak uh, the album, vinyls? album. So, not so the I can vinyls, get signed? Not the vinyls. Why not the that? vinyls? Because the vinyls are black. They're not going to sign the, the but vinyls. But I'm saying the covers, like the sleeves. No, uh, maybe the sleeves, but not the actual vinyl. Mm-hmm. Because if you, you're going to be in the ocean, and I don't know <laughs> if you drop it in the water, <laughs> then I will, I will. then it will be just the Joaquin I'm Overflow a, podcast. I'm, I'm going to I'm say I dropped it in the water. You're going to come to the house. You're going to see him signed on my yeah. wall. <laughs> And then, then it'll just be me on the podcast by myself after your funeral. But yeah, dude, she she um she was able she was able to get get us quick, a room. Oh man, it was funny, and she tried like four or five times because she would get the room, and then they have all these other questions like yeah. of all these other things that you wanted, right? And by the time she would click on everything, all right, this is it. Like the room would disappear. Yeah. So she kept coming back, and then we, like she finally like gave up, right? Send me a text message. I'm sorry. I really tried, but it, like the rooms kept getting scooped up. And then, in, like in the middle of that, I'm like, "Okay, baby, don't worry about it. You know, you tried. Thank you for trying." Then right. I get another text message. Another room showed up. I got it. That's it. We're good. <laughs> you should be getting a confirmation email. And I was like, "God!" I was like, nice. "Oh, thank 
it, and that's dude. In, when is that? Next year. Next year. That's right. And the best thing, like, well, not even the best thing. That another another piece of it is that the day that it goes out is on my birthday. Oh, uh-huh. so July sixth. Yeah, you're like like the just, worst best friend. I just threw out like it's four like, different. Like, I, I, I said like three <laughs> different numbers, <laughs> hoping that like, I was like four is seven. <laughs> like the worst best friend. 13th. This is the 13th. Like, as my best friends. Uh, it's July so My best friends should know when my birthday is. <laughs> Let me look on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Juice, you know when my birthday is, right? No, nobody. No. Do you know when my birthday is? <sighs> Yours is September 27th. Ha, you're wrong. Oh, 26. Because it's the day before. It's That's the right. the day before. And because so, I, I mentioned it. Yeah, but you were wrong. All the days you said were like wrong. <laughs> It's in July. It's in July. I know it's in July. It's on the 11th. July 11th. I said 11. But you did it. I, I mean, it was in there within all the numbers I was I was <laughs> like, out. July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 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 And another thing is um, our friends at New Release Today, I reached out to them and we're going to be hanging out with the New Release Today crew. Oh, nice. So it'll be... Um, It'll be an interesting cruise. That'll be fun. Hey, maybe the moon will look amazing on this next cruise. Like maybe it'll be in HD. Maybe it'll be better than HD. Suck. <laughs> um, so and so. Okay, so to give a, the quick backstory, Jay and his wife. No, nope, you don't have to go into a quick backstory. Went, went on a cruise. We don't have to go into a quick backstory. <laughs> Jay says to me, <laughs> Jay says to me on the cruise, man, it was amazing. Like the moon was so big, it, look, it looked better than HD. And I just kind of paused. And I looked at him, and I was like, "Well, I hope it's better than HD because it's real life. <laughs> we see better than HD." I will never let him forget that. I mean, that's just the way we roll. Anyway. We got the cruise. Uh, oh, uh, he Sun Lee uh, just dropped a couple of uh, spoken word pieces. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you haven't listened to them yet? I listened to one. I listened to I listened to both of them. I listened to the first one. Yeah, I listened to both of them. I like the second one, I think, a little better. But so you, uh, I think that album's coming out. And that album's coming out soon. Like a, yeah, like... Either the beginning of next month or the end of this month. Yeah, we should we should like we should post the, the spoken word pieces on the website. So give us some more push. But we should we should we should we should real dope. I like them and they were and it was different. It was like for her. Um, I know she's done spoken word pieces before, but um, I just thought it was cool to kind of get a different, you know, hear her just a little differently. So um, now, now on the geek side of news. Okay, now I, I finally saw Civil War. So I saw Civil War, and and it was good. It was good, right? It was good. It was good. And it you was, know, we, it was, we were, we were talking about this before, and in my opinion, in my personal opinion, it was the um, for me it was the best Marvel movie. I know you disagree because you uh, say I, Guardians, I of Guardians of the Galaxy is, was, is, but um, for me it was the best Marvel movie. But it's like it's. The main reason why I didn't, why I wasn't so excited to see it, it's just another Marvel rollout. It, right, it just that's the that's the one thing. The movie was great. The action pieces were fantastic. The action was great. I mean, the movie flowed great. It was entertaining. Um, it's definitely a movie I think worth going to the theater to go see, um, especially the big airport fight scene on the big screen. It was a lot of fun. It was, but phenomenal. But it just felt like a Marvel movie. Like, yeah, it was they, just they don't another. Take any big risks in their movies? You know, you know. That's why with Batman Superman, even with all the problems that it had, I mean, they killed. Superman. It was it was definitive, <laughs> you know. Right, like, it was definitive. Like, you know, with all the junk and all the crap they say about Doomsday, but there was a Doomsday, right? There was a big scary antagonist who actually killed the hero of the movie at the end, right? Marvel. And I think we talked about this either last week or a couple of weeks back. They tend to either not have good villains or they water down their villains. Right. Right. Because, I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big comic geek, like super big comic geek. Right. And for me, one of the biggest out of the many complaints I have about Iron Man 3 is the treatment that they gave the Mandarin. Right. right? And now in, in Civil War, Baron Zemo was just like a knucklehead soldier bent on revenge. Yeah, he was like a specialized my, guy that was... You, you yeah, killed was, my wife and kids. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then, you know, and, and in then the then comics, like, and, Baron Zemo, he, he, he's a he's a tough dude. And then like eight, you know, like in in the movie, it was weird because he, you know, how did he find it? There's like there was information he found out, and it was like really, he cracked all this supposedly like really difficult code in eighteen months. Yeah. Not only that, but he found the secret locations and, and of all knew, the other bad guys, and he knew, and he knew exactly. All... He knew exactly like what piece of information. And the other thing, I'm just gonna say it. So, spoiler alert. But how convenient that there was that one camera with that great resolution in the middle of a dark dirt road where they <laughs> could film the Winter Soldier. Killing Tony Stark's parents. Yeah. And, and how convenient <laughs> that he looks at the camera, you see his face before he shoots it. And, um, because, <laughs> like, so as let's, much crap as people want to talk about, oh, because Superman said Martha, because that was just as bad. Let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Like, considering the, the time frame that that was supposed to have, to have taken place in 1990. Right. Come 91, on, 1991 cameras Come, were not that, that cameras clear. were not that great, especially in dark, dingy dirt roads. Right? It would have been covered up with dust, with dirt, whatever. I mean, well, come even on. If it was clean. It would have. It would have been grainy. It still would have been, been grainy. Yeah. It was, I was like, come on, really? And then Captain America knew all this time. He somehow knew, and he never said anything. And, and he never said, and they never. Uh, my question was like, why did Captain America right. and, and know? Then, and then, and then, <laughs> and then let's let's bring it up. Let's bring it up. The the picture that they took of the guy, right? What well, they 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 show just the eyes and the hat pulled all the way down, and automatically, yes, it's, picture it's, evidence shows that it was the Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Like no no facial recognition software. Tony Stark, who's who's got a phone that he could just like swing, and the screen of the phone shows up on any surface, right? But automatically, yeah, look. He wears a hat pulled all the way down to his eyebrows. Yeah, he con- That's the Winter yeah, Soldier. He had long hair. Yeah, it was it was a bit. I mean, it had its problems. But we're just being, we're just being. No, no, no. no. DC <laughs> fan boys a little bit right now. No, no, because no, I was told I was told that Civil War was a perfect movie. It had no plot holes. I'm oh, like, come on, you, you, no. you're being a bit of a fanboy right now. Yeah. No, you have to go see it. It has no plot holes. I counted so many last night. You know, yeah. let me stop counting plot holes. Let me just enjoy the movie. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if not, I mean, we agree, phenomenal, phenomenal to bring in the Black Panther. Yes. Right? And Spider-Man. His character was awesome. Yes. Like, the actor that played him, Nailed perfectly. It. Nailed it. Perfect. Right? Spider-Man, that Tom Holland kid, perfect. Yep. Perfect, perfect, Nailed perfect, perfect. I, 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 May, no complaints. Because <laughs> I happen to like Marissa Tomei. Perfect. <laughs> Who does it? You know, she's she, 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 she's she's kept it off all these years. She's like what 50, she's, 51, 52? 50, Yeah, fifty. You know oh, what I mean? Marissa but Tomei. like, hmm. <laughs> Spider Man <laughs> was awesome to watch. Ant Man was hilarious. Yeah, Ant Man was great. My favorite Ant Man though, where he. When Ant Man first meets Captain America, cracks me up. It's Captain America. Oh, he's like he's no, when, 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 yeah, he was like he was like, thank you for thanking me. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for thank you for thanking of me. <laughs> and then when he's about to fight uh, Black Widow, he's like, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> She's like, I think I'll be fine. But he but he did the thing though, right? But he did. He shrugged. She was like, What? <laughs> that he was did so it. Great though. He did that it. Was so he, great. That was fantastic. Then he, he when he grew and he turned giant man. I mean, it was it was it was pretty. Okay, and, and we, we I, I said this to you earlier, but I will have to agree with the with the interwebs that as far as the flow of the story, yes. a civil war it was not as choppy right. it, as it Batman, v Superman, Batman v Superman. Yeah. Right? It was not as choppy. Right. So that, yes, I'll give it to but that. But I will say this, and I, I am being fanboyish right now, and I will wear it proudly. But Batman and Batman v Superman would wipe the floor <laughs> with all those all those <laughs> Avengers because that Batman was super brutal. <laughs> you know, and I was reading. That's all I'm gonna say. I was reading that um, the whole Martha thing that everybody's harping on. It wasn't. It wasn't. Well, and and, and and they have the right to harp on it because this is. It, it was perceived that way, like oh. 
your name is Mar your mother's name is Martha, my mother's name was Martha, bro, yeah, yeah. Right. right. But the what that was, what that was supposed to be, and maybe in the uncut version it does a better explanation or realization, yeah. was that when Superman said his mother's name, like it, it brought Bruce back to the fact that his father said um Martha before he died. Right? And it right. and and it woke Bruce up into realizing yeah. that he became as bad as the bad guy that created him. Right. He became so, as bad yeah. yeah. He became a bad guy. He realized that, right. that he think, was a I bad guy. I think you sent me something where yeah, I talked about yeah, I think you I, know, ta I, I tagged where you where he starts branding people and he's right. you know and this is you know he starts uh shooting you know he 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 breaks out of out of his character. Uh-huh. And and if you watch the movie, I mean, Alfred even touched on it though, right? right? Oh, he, yeah, he touched on Alfred, it Alfred almost every like, single you know, time. Hey, when, when you know, it's like it's like a fever when you know turns good men this, bad. It turns good men bad. You know, and so it, the elements were there. You had a, a little digging, but you know. So maybe in the uncut version, because like you said, maybe it was lost in the editing. Right. But maybe in the uncut version, once it gets here, I think it's July it gets here. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited. Maybe in the uncut we're version. Having a, we're it's, having it, a Batman v Superman it's better. watching party here at my house because I've got the big speakers. We're going to rumble the apartment. <laughs> my neighbors are going to get mad, but I don't care. Now your neighbors will be smoking weed, so they'll They're, probably just think it's part of the high. It will be. I live with drug dealers <laughs> above me. No, they don't live with me. They do live, <laughs> they do live above me. As long as they leave me alone. I don't, I don't care. Segue out of this. But, so as we're talking, but as, we're, as we're geeking out. Hey, it's been a great week for comic book fans. The Flash was freaking fantastic this weekend. Or this week's Fla The Flash. Oh, the Did ending, you watch it? You watched the, it. The ending upset me. Oh, what? Oh, uh, when they kill... Spoiler alert. When they kill this... When, when they, they kill, kill Barry's father. I didn't even finish saying that. But yes, when they kill this yeah, father. But it... it oh, that came kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, it upset me. That was a great move by... That was a great move by Zoom, though. Killing his dad in the same place his mom died? It about wrecking the dude. Yeah, it, it upset me. It upset me not because he... Well, yeah, it upset me because he killed him. But it also upset me because, dude, you're the Flash. Like, try to do something beyond throwing yourself on your knees and crying and begging the bad guy not to do so, not to right. kill him. Like, do anything. Like, even anything. Even if you try and he still kills him, but you try. Yeah, you you're know, You're the though, Flash. You try. Uh, yeah, but I think, I think it's just... You think, um, he'll go, you think he'll go back in time? No, I think though he think he'll run around, he run circles around the run earth, circles around the earth like Superman, <laughs> the original, the second Superman. No, um, I mean I just think Zoom's in his head. No matter how hyped he was when he came back from the Speed Force coma, or whatever, Zoom's in his head, and I think, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, that's why it was brilliant to kill his dad. When you know, his, when you know what, died. you know what Barry needs. He needs a he needs a Batman to like slap him around and straighten need, him out. He has that. He has that in the arrow. He, so he, the arrow he needs to show up. He he needs to to keep his eyes on Jesus, so he can run over water. <laughs> <sighs> Even though technically he's already done that. <laughs> I'm just gonna say boo to that boo. Um, and I will say this: I really like Earth 2's Black Canary. How come that Black Canary could not have been on Arrow? Because <laughs> she was bad. <laughs> uh, that's another thing that upset me. But that was last week. How they just killed off Black Canary. It's like it just... Well, somebody had to. <sighs> I, 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 I'm probably going to... Well, they don't listen to this. But I'll piss off all the Alicity fans. For me, Felicity should have been killed off. Yeah, I really thought that would have been a great move if they had killed her off when uh, she got attacked. Yeah, she should have been killed Red off. Dark's man. That would have been crazy. She should have been dead. Yeah, but... It should have been her. Now, listen to fans. <laughs> they're powerful. It I should guess. have been her. Like, it really should have been her. She was created for the show. I, I mean, her position, because she was a character in the comics, right, she's like a, but like just a, like a secretary. A minor, yeah, a minor, right? minor she was, character. Given all this position and whatever, they they could they should have killed her off, yeah. and they just brought you know back I, brought I back some, um, I know some people, Mister Terrific, yeah. as as whatever yeah. what do they call him the the what the Overwatch Overwatch yeah right yeah it should yeah, have been that you know some I don't know I I I don't have the problems with um with Arrow this season I, I've I've enjoyed it I I love the dark character like 
you know, with the magic and, and he's just, I mean, he is just, yeah, he's just he's pure evil. evil. You know, I, I love, I, and that, you know, and that's interesting because, you know, once again, you know, DC seems to have like so much better bad guys. Yeah. Cause even in there, even like, uh, I've been watching ages of shield and it, the season ended and it ended yeah. fairly, I don't know. It ended weird to me. I didn't quite understand. It, it. was very, no, it was, it was real weird. I saw, I saw it on Tuesday and it, the ending, like the new bad guy, like the guy, the inhuman that took over Ward, he was like, he was very I, menacing, right? Yes. All these episodes, he was like brutal. And then it ended with him being all, uh, all like, I don't know, like melancholic. Yeah, like, like he had this moment with, you know, uh, I, that didn't bother me as much because they had <laughs> messed with him, but it was like, like, I honestly wanted them, I wanted Daisy to die. By this episode, because yeah, they, she was so whiny. And they can't, yeah, so, but they can't kill. They I know won't they can't kill, kill her. Daisy. I'm just telling you what I wanted. Who do you think the new the 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 new director? The is? new director is. <sighs> Maybe they're bringing back um, Fury. Fury. I, I don't know. Because, I know. He wasn't a Civil War. Because right, see, and that's the thing, man, and that's why I'm glad that DC kept the universes separate because Agents of Shield is quote unquote in that universe. But how is it that you have these superheroes having like this? How is it that you have this inhuman menace going on and none of the Avengers are like asked to come in and help? But it's funny, though, right? Because in the first season, like they brought in Fury. Right. Right. They brought in Sif. Right. Right. And in the second season. They brought in Maria Hill. Right. They brought in Hill. And in the second season, like what made the second season good was the fact that they connected it to um, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Right. Right? It was amazing. Yeah, it was good. But and now it's like... Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I'm, now it's I'm, back to the first season, just... Wah, wah. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm and not another sure. big move, Supergirl moved from CBS... To CW. To the CW. And they're already talking crossovers with Arrow. With all four properties. Legends. And... All four properties. So how? So I bet you Barry, he goes and gets her and brings her... To help. To help. So yeah, because they 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 mentioned all that in the Supergirl episode, but they didn't like when he came back to the Flash universe. Well, to his own right, he never talked Earth, about it. He never talked about it, even though they did show the episode where he came back and right. he showed that that Tachyon thing on his on his. Yeah, so I bet you. Emblem, so I so. bet you, all, if something will happen, he'll be like, "Hey, you know when when I was trying to run super fast and I had the Tachyon, I I actually hit another world and you know." Right. And another thing. The TV show, Powerless. I sent you the trailer. Yes, there's a new TV show, Powerless. It is, think of like, um, you ever wonder like, or like I do, who, what insurance company pays for all this damage that happens in these superhero See, movies? At least in Marvel, Marvel had a comic uh, uh, damage like, control. Like a cleanup crew, yeah. Right, it was a come cleanup in and crew. clean up and stuff. And they've mentioned it. Yes. They've mentioned it in the in, in the movie. But, I, but I'm still like, you know, if like your car is, you know, and all of a sudden gets crushed by the hole. You got to get. Like this, you're this, you're this, in good hands this, with Allstate. Yeah, this, now offering superhero insurance. <laughs> yeah, like this all, Like if you live in a city with a superhero, how high is your insurance? <laughs> it's like, it's like forget trying to pay rent. You but can't it's, pay it's, your car It's insurance. hilarious. And the, and the thing that I like, the move that I but like powerless. that they did was that they brought in. Like sci-fi, sci-fi nerds, right? Because oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They the guy that the, the the boss, like he's done a lot of sci-fi boss, movies. He was in Firefly, and right? He's been like and then um, Abed yeah. from Abed Community, from Community. And he's uh, done. Yes. A, I, I think he was in. I think he was in. Um, he was in Winter Soldier. Was he? He was in Winter Soldier. He was like a shield agent in Winter Soldier. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, that's right. That's you know, right. So. Yeah, so I like the you know what else I like the fact too. I like the fact that Superman exists in this world. Right. They talk about it. They, uh, Wonder they mention Woman, all of them. You know, Wonder Woman destroys something, and they're like, "Well, is that an act of God?" And they're like, "Well, she's well, a, she's demigod. a demigod." That's like right? a gray area. <laughs> it was great. It was, and they mentioned it was they they mentioned Aquaman, and yes. then and then apparently they're showing like like B B level like B level heroes and bad guys, you know, because maybe they can't. With the major ones, but still, it's 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 um it's a pretty dope concept. Yeah, I, I think uh, it'll be. They're fun. like insurance adjusters, right? Yeah, they're like insur- Yeah, they're insurance adjusters. Um, so yeah, and yeah, it's got a lot of humorous stuff. But uh, something something that was in the trailer. I'm not sure if you caught it. 
when they tackled the guy saying he was Green nah. Lantern? Oh, nah. That nah. was hilarious, though. That was hilarious. No. When the boss came in and whatever, he was in his office, and then they like he turned the mic on or something, and they were able to hear him from outside. Right. And he was, oh, I'm so proud of you, son. Oh, thanks, dad, or whatever. He was looking at, at Lex Luthor's uh, magazine um, article or whatever. No, his autobiography. Oh, is that what it was? Well, yeah, I, yeah. It looked like a magazine to me. Which, but... which, which, which is like, it's awesome because it's straight from the comics. But still, it was the Luthor autobiography. So is this guy like Luthor's son or connected to Luthor somehow? Ah, oh, and he's like trying to like live up to his dad's expectations. It's, it's. That would be. It's, it's a. Yeah, it's, it's a very I, interesting thing. It, it, you know what? It looks like it's going to be good. So that, that probably means they'll cancel after three episodes because me and Jay are <laughs> super hyped about this show. <laughs> if anything, anytime we get super hyped about a show, it gets canceled. It seems to get canceled. You know, like we were, ex- we were a little excited about of Kings and Prophets and two episodes. two episodes. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to give up on that. Um, so, yeah. So we've just completely geeked out today. Um, and Juice is in the and background shaking Juice his head. Juice is in the background shaking his head, weeping. <laughs> but you know what? That's that's okay. You know, if you want us to hit other weird topics, just hit us up and say, hey, why don't you talk about this? And we'll talk about just about anything. Just about. So, with that being said, eh, eh, Jay goes, eh. But he knows we will. Yeah, you will more than me. <clears throat> well, true. I have no filter. Um. So, with that being said, having no filter... Filter, filters, use filters for water. And we're going to talk about water for a second. Oh, <laughs> see, like little... My segue was better. Uh, yeah, but it was too early. I didn't know. It was too early. <laughs> I'm not looking at the clock. It was too early. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'll let you. you look, I'm the clock. I'm the clock. I'm the, t- I'm the, I'm the timekeeper. You're the t- <laughs> I'm the time master. You're the keeper of clocks. Um. So what did you say? Okay, so we'll, 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 uh, we'll kind of rewind this. No, no, no. Let's just get to it. Hey. Flash needs to keep his eyes on Jesus so he can run on water. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Now, so this week, uh, if you saw the video, uh, Jay, um, Jay's, uh, the topic was, uh, or the kind of the overarching topic is faith. You know, how, how is your faith? And then the scripture that we're going to look at uh, today is, is one that is, that is very well known. Um, and it's when, uh, when Jesus um, is coming, is uh, the disciples go out onto the water on a boat. You kind of get a storm going on, and they look, and they see a figure walking on the water. And so they're all like, "Ah, oh, what's that?" It's and, a ghost. And it's you know, and so Jesus is like, "Hey, fellas!" Now this is the Joaquin kind of. Translation. The Joaquin translation. <laughs> it's like, hey fellas, it's me, Jesus. No need to be afraid. And um, and so Peter, uh, you know, was like, well, if it's really you, then let me step out. And Jesus was like, all right, come on. <laughs> and Peter steps out. So we're gonna look at this. At this, we're actually gonna look at the actual verses, and uh, we'll uh, we'll break it down a little bit. And see what Jay has in uh, has in store for us today. So Jay. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> we need to come out with like a Joaquin translation um, of the Bible. But anyway. Um, yeah, bro. Yeah. So as you mentioned earlier, you know, you were a little disappointed at the concert because like no one showed up. Like people didn't show up. Right. right. I You're was right. disappointed because I showed up. The, <laughs> we were doing the concert for my church home to help raise funds to send kids to camp. Right. Right. Correct. So I was disappointed that no one from my church home showed up to support kids to go to camp from the church to go right? to camp. So that was that was that's what I was struggling with that night. Right. After everybody was gone, everything was done. Um Canon and all of them, they all went to IHOP. It's funny, they went to they went to the IHOP where I first met Vagda. Right. And um Oh, okay. I, I, you know, they text me. It's like, hey, we're at this IHOP. You know, come meet us. I had to take um, Junie's best friend Ryan home and whatever. But um, like, I just texted back. It's like I'm just going home, right? Because man, no buses didn't invite me. Because um, like I, just, I didn't, music. I did not want to go and be with the artists and whatever, and and have to answer questions like, hey, Jay, what happened? 
did anybody from your church show up? And was anybody from your church there? I was like, yeah, one of my youth kids and the accountant showed up. Yeah, well, no, and I, I didn't want to. And I, I didn't want to add. The I pastor's wanna, son showed up. But yeah, the pastor's son. That's true. And then you know Curry, but you know it's our event. But um, so I just went home, and and what hit me about about my struggle, and I, I'm home. It's so funny. I, I'm home, and I put on um, Uncharted Four to play, right? Okay. And they're like, "Oh, but come on over." And I take a screenshot. I take a snapshot of the of the TV. Say, "Oh, I'm stuck in Uncharted Four right now." I was like, "Oh, we're so jealous. We should have went to your house, <laughs> right?" But um. It was almost like my way of decompressing. I'm there. I'm playing a charter four. And in my mind, I'm like having a conversation with God. And like the Holy Spirit put this, put this, put this story into my heart, right? The whole walk in the water. And I think I mentioned it in the video where I believe that because a lot of people, so it's a very familiar story, right? But the viewpoint of a lot of preachers or pastors that I've heard is that, is when they, they talk about, you know, well, Peter lost faith. And because he saw the storm around him, he lost faith and he started <clears throat> sinking. Really? I've never heard that. <laughs> but what preachers are you hanging around? But <laughs> you know, I, I saw it as, you know, he has he, he's I see it as he had a lot of faith. Because it takes more faith to actually be like, all right, I'm gonna step out. I'm stepping out into this water. You know, Jesus, if it's you like, and it's a storm, tell me to come. It's not right? like it's not like yeah, right. It wasn't but, you know, calm water. Yeah, it wasn't calm water. It wasn't like a Lake Placid or whatever, right? It was, it was a storm, right? It was a shadowy figure, right? So Jesus, if it's you, like any knucklehead practical joker could have been that person and say, come. And Peter would have walked out to his death, right? But it took a lot of faith for him to get up and take that step out of the boat, you know, to know right. that, hey, Jesus said it. So right. I'm going to do it. Right. So he knows, right? yeah, he knows it's Jesus. Exactly. You know, he heard, you know, whether, whether it's a combination of see and right, he sees him. Well, he didn't really he, see and, him. And he, he just hear, saw he hears him, like the right? finger, but he heard him. Right. Right. He knew it was him. Well, we don't know so, so my thing was like, what I was struggling with was, was the quitting. Right. Because a couple weeks back, like I was thinking of all this. And I'm like, you know, if um, if no one shows up, like I'm not doing any more events. I'm done, though. Like I'm done, right? But um, it was in the quitting. So I was struggling with that right? because what well, we do, we do events, we do a lot of outreach. Correct. So um, so that's when I'm, I'm I'm having this conversation, this internal conversation with the Lord, and I feel that the Holy Spirit put this on my heart, this this, this these verses in my heart, because you know. What we do takes a lot of faith. But the strength in that faith lies in do we just step out or do we step out and do we actually walk and then keep walking? Right. Right. Because according to scripture, like Peter saw, it wasn't so much that he saw the water, right? Because that, 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 that's one thing that when I opened up these passages, I realized that Peter didn't start sinking because he doubted because he was on the water because he was walking on the water. Right. What caused Peter to doubt funny enough were the wind of the, or well, the winds of the storm. Right. In verse, in verse 30, it says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid, you know, um, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. So we know that when he stepped out, he had his, you know, cause that's how I will always, uh, it, it was always explained to, to me and the way I've heard it preached is, you know, when he walked out, he had his eyes on Jesus. <clears throat> but then it says, when he saw the wind. So in other words, he stops looking at Jesus. He probably thinks to himself, oh my goodness, I'm walking on water. And then he realizes <laughs> it's in the middle of a storm. So what does he do? He starts, it says, right, he starts seeing the wind in the storm. So, you know, this is very simplistic, right? So he took his eyes off of Jesus and he's looking at the wind. He's looking at the storm. He's yeah, which, looking at the chaos. Which is funny. It's like the lyrics of the song, if I keep my eyes on Jesus. But me, knowing that you can't see wind, <laughs> right? I'm thinking more that the wind was buffeting him. Right. right. It was hitting him strong and whatever. And so those were like, for me, I interpreted that as obstacles, right? Things are going wrong. Or things did not come out the way you saw or the way you hoped 
or the way you pray, right? So the disappointment right. comes in, the fear comes in, the doubt comes in, right? So that, like for me, for me, that's what the wind represented. It's not, you know, I stay walking on water, but then all this stuff happens, right? All the, the naysayers, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't have, or, or you didn't do this, or you didn't do that, you didn't do enough of this, or you start self-doubting, Lord, did I pray enough? Lord, did I believe enough? Lord, is it because of my post that I said I'm going to quit? You know, I mean, and, 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 and it's anything. Did I did I put enough flyers out? Did I? I mean, it's right because it's, it's it's. No, I I know I put enough flyers out because Cannon told me I was I was promoting like a beast. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying. Well, but no, know, no, I know what you're saying. You know, just did I go to enough stores and put flyers up? Right. Did I, I mean, because that's the thing. So, so to me, is like when you when you're talking, it's like it's you know the 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 sinking doesn't come because you. Because you don't have faith, right? Because Peter didn't lose faith. They didn't say he lost his faith in Jesus. What it's shown is, but he took his eyes off of him. He he got distracted by everything around. We get distracted, you know, by everything around. Right. You know, like you're just saying, did I do this enough? Did I not do this? And see, and so and so that then we start looking at those things, and that's when we start sinking, right? Obviously, we're not walking literally on water. We're walking on land, but we sink into, you know, me and you uh, are very susceptible a lot of times to just get in. We get inside our heads and we just sink into like this funky depression and this funkiness where we just kind of like, oh, we don't want to talk to nobody. And, you know, we want to cover our heads and hide in a closet, you know, in the dark somewhere and, and just be like, just leave me alone. Because we get so caught up in what didn't happen, all the, all the, the stuff. Yeah, all the stuff, all the stuff, and then even the internally, right? Lord, is 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 my life right? Am I doing something wrong? Right? Am I am I failing you in whatever pocket or whatever thing? Right, right. And so that's so why when, when when Jesus grabbed him by the hand and pulled him out, he said, "You know, oh, you have such small faith, right?" Because his faith was large enough and was strong enough to step out of the boat and actually start walking on water. But then he starts getting buffeted and all these things happen. Right. And then his faith dwindled because well, because of what you said. Like right. he took his focus off Jesus and started focusing on all the things well, around and, him. And that, that second part of that verse, right? Jesus immediately reached out his and I'm on I'm on Matthew uh, fourteen thirty one. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh you of little faith, comma, and this is what gets us. Why did you doubt? Exactly. You know? So, you know, Peter sank because he began, I, I think, the way I'm looking at this, right? You know, he, his faith was like, you know, a hundred when he stepped out. Yeah, like super saiyan faith. Right? And so, as he notices everything around him, his faith begins to dwindle. And then he, be, and then. And then his fear the and doubt, his doubt start growing. All of a sudden, he's doubting. Why is he walking? Why did I step out this boat? <laughs> right, right. Because even though I'm walking and it's solid, you know, a, some strong wind might come and knock me down. And I'm thinking as he's walking and as he's realizing all this stuff, in my mind, it's like he's like every taking steps step, down. Every step, he's like sinking a little bit, a little bit, to where finally, when he when Jesus meets him, he's probably up to his neck, and that's why he's like Jesus had to reach down. <laughs> <laughs> <pull him up. laughs> And so what 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 I did was um I I took these verses and I and I and I broke well specifically verses 28, 29 and 30, right? And I gave them little titles to go with the verse because you and I both know people that are called or they have a passion to do something for the Lord or for the church and then as soon as things start to not go their way or become right. hard or difficult. Right. They quit or they hit an obstacle, yeah. right? They quit and say, Oh, well, it must not be from God. So I'm done. And then they, they stop, right. right? They just stop and they become stagnant or they pick it up again. And then another obstacle and then they quit again, right? right? Rather than pressing through, pressing through and pushing on and keeping their eyes on Jesus. Right. And even I've gone through that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, I, I don't think uh, uh, there would be very few Christians that, that haven't done that. Right. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. Right. So, you know, we're reading out of Matthew 14, verse 28. It says, and Peter answered him. Right. Because before that, before that, he said, he, they saw the shadowy figure 
And Peter said, Lord, if that's you, then call me, call me out and I'll go. Right. right. Command me. Right. Yeah. That's Lord, like, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Command me to come to you on the water. That's right? a pretty bold statement, yeah. though, too. You it's know? not like, hey, call me out. It's like, tell me to step out. Yeah, yeah. like, I dare you, son. I dare yeah. you. Tell me. Tell, tell me to step out. Tell me to step out, and I'll, I'll go. Do it? You don't think I'll do it? Right? So that, that as a believer, right now, you know, we have a, a passion to do whatever. A passion to do whatever for the church. A passion to do whatever for the kingdom. Whether, And I'm saying specifically the church, or specifically the kingdom of God, or a ministry or something, you know, you have a passion to sing, but you're afraid, or you think that, you know, the church don't need another singer or whatever, right? Then pray, right? Pray and ask, Lord, if it's you, command me, right? Or give me assurance, give me clarity to do this thing and I'll do it, right? So that's, you know, listening to the voice of God to find the assurance, assurance in, in the authority of God, right? Okay. So verse 28, you know, and Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Right? So Peter needed to know that it was God. He needed to hear God's voice, God's calling, or Jesus' calling to know that it's okay for him to get out of the boat, Step out of the boat. And, and move in that direction towards Christ. Right? Right. So that's assurance that it's a calling from God. And then 29, he, Jesus, said, come. Right? It's so funny to me, right? It's like, Jesus wasn't like, yes, Peter, it's me, Jesus, that's talking to you right now. Come on. He wasn't like, no. you know, specific, assuring, you know, right. almost he like yeah, he didn't give him a whole comforting, life. nothing. It was just like, sermon. he just said, come. come. Come, because there's power and authority in Jesus' in, in, in the name and in, and in his words, right? So Peter got out of the boat, and he walked on water and came to Jesus. Right? Did you catch that? I think so. Did you catch that? He came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. It wasn't that Peter was walking and while he was walking, you know, he started sinking Like Peter walked and he made it to Jesus. So he got, he's there with Jesus before Jesus. And then he felt the wind and then things got rough. And then, you know, things weren't going so well. And he started sinking. See, because, I, and you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but I always, I, I always thought, and even in movies and whatever, Peter gets out of the water and he takes a few steps and then he starts sinking, right? And then Jesus appears and grabs and him, him while out, he was sinking, right. pulls him out. But no, very clear. It's like, yeah. it's like, you know, we missed this, right? Yeah, he says, right. Peter he, got out of the boat and walked on the water and, and came, came to, to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So he got there. He walked on the water, one step, two steps, 20 steps. But he got there to Jesus. He made it to Jesus, right? Because Jesus said, "Come." So he went. And he went. Yes. And as a quick, and as a quick aside, like just real super quick, you know, there's, you know, all Jesus had right when you said Jesus, all Jesus had to say was "Come." Right. Because Peter, you know, this is so important for us as believers to understand is that Jesus only had to say "Come" because Peter knew Jesus' voice. Right. Because he's. Obviously, he spent time with Jesus. He, you know, ate with Jesus, hung out with Jesus. He spent time he with him. He spent Jesus. time with him. And so all Jesus had to say was, come. You get in, you get in ahead of me, but it's cool. Oh, am I? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's cool. It's right? no, no, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool, right? Because that, that, that brings us to the second point, which is obedience. Right? Which is obedience. Because we... I, I, I get a lot of a lot of young kids or a lot of young adults that ask me, you know, well, Jay, how, how did you know that you know that you wanted to be what you are, right? How did you know that you wanted to be a preacher, right? How did you know that you wanted to like speak and write and do all these things that you do? And I was like, because like when I was young, right, I I I, I asked God all the time, and I and I would pray and I would cry out to God all the time, Lord, you know, this is what I want. This is what I do. This is what I, I love talking about them. I love like teaching and telling people about them. Right. This is what I want to do. Right. Correct. So you have to spend time, right? Because no superfluous words, no long dragged out explanations or comforting, whatever, no confirmation of two or three people, you know, cause sometimes we always look for confirmation, right? Jesus said, come. 
Peter got out of the boat and he went to him. Right. And then before Jesus, in front of Jesus, he started doubting because what? Right. Cause he just saw the wind and verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. So he was in front of Jesus. He saw all the obstacles and then he became afraid. And he started sinking because right, almost, the, the doubt came in. It's standing in front of Jesus. Right. Well, it's almost like he didn't even see obstacles because he made it to Jesus. Right. So it's like he's, he he makes it to Jesus and then he just, but then he sees all the craziness going on around him. And then it, 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 that's what that's what pulls him away. So, you know, so as, as we're reading here, right, he gets to Jesus. There was no obstacles. Nothing. He didn't see the obstacles. They weren't there because he was focused, he was on, focused on Jesus. getting to Jesus. When he gets there, he he kind of steps back, and then all of a sudden, whoa! Look at all this stuff I was, I just walked through. <clears throat> or scary. Or you know, I no, look back. no, no <laughs> one says you know. The, the the and when you get to Christ, when you get to Christ, all of a sudden, like extra things start buffeting you, right? Because you want to stay focused, right? right you want to be with God, right? So then all these things they just start coming and they start attacking or they start piling up to take your focus away from Jesus. If you are with Jesus, if you're right directly in front of Jesus under his hand within reach, right? Then as the, look, we're going back to the song, you know, if I keep my eyes on Jesus, I can walk on water. So he was there in front of Jesus. All of a sudden the winds and all this stuff started picking up. Right. And then he started seeking because even though he was before God, these things were happening. Right. right, which is why he started seeking, and he cried out to the Lord, "Lord, save me!" And Jesus came and said, "You know, you have little faith. You know, why did you doubt? Yeah, you right? made it this far. Right, you made it. You're here. You're in front of me. And we do that sometimes. Oh, right, we do that sometimes. sometimes. We're All in the, the we're, we're in the presence of God. You know, things are moving and things are going great. Like in the concert, right? Like in the concert, things were good. Right, Cannon was there. He did it. He he." He opened up about himself, was transparent in ministry, right? And and I took my focus off of that to put my focus on look, the church is empty. Yeah. Right? But Only, but there was still yeah. but there was still a move of God Only, that I would have missed correct. if I would have stayed focused on the fact that the church was empty. Correct. Right. So so what we're teaching is is not to give in to the circumstances. Circumstance will always be there to take your focus. Life would always be there to pile up on you or buffet you back and forth Correct. to take your focus off of Jesus. Right. And we always tend to, we always tend to look at it because it didn't go well, whatever that means, whatever context that means, it didn't go well, that somehow we missed it or, or, Jesus, or we didn't succeed. Jesus is in or we didn't succeed. It reminds me of, and I might've shared this before, but it, it's, you know, when I was in college, went on a mission trip to Fort Wayne, Indiana uh, during spring break. And we did two services in a prison. The first service, everything was like on point, right? One person came forward to accept Jesus. And I'll be honest, I was very disappointed. <laughs> there was only one person because I thought I, because I did the message and I thought it was fantastic. So what happens? Second service, the our uh, our PA system dies. Our instruments die. We had a girl that just sang a song a cappella. The prisoners did not react in any way to anything. They did not react at all to anything that was done. And I'm sitting there speaking and I'm thinking to myself, oh, this has been a monumental failure. Right? Because I'm focusing on, you know, I'm fo I have, I focused on everything that went wrong. Like, I think it was like 13 or 14 guys came forward except Christ. Wow. Right? And it was because, you know, and it wasn't because of me. Everything went wrong, but God was still moving. But, but I had completely lost sight of the fact that it's not about things going right, but it's about us presenting, presenting the word of God and letting God do what God's going to do. And we get so caught up and so frustrated when things like that happen. We, you know, I've done shows where I've had three people show up and I've crushed, right? But when I think back on that, it was amazing conversations about God that happened. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so that's, that's where we have to remember. I think in, in, in all of this is that when all this stuff is going on around us and we think that's a failure, we just need to maintain 
our eyes on, you know, like Peter, we just need to maintain our eyes on Jesus. Or not like, well, like Peter, the first half of that story. Right? We need to maintain our eyes on him and just say, look, yeah, I, I, I noticed the storms, but this is, I'm doing this because of this dude yeah, right here. I'm focused on Christ. This is the guy. This is why I'm doing it. This is why we do the show. <clears throat> this is why we, we do the, the thing, whatever it is that we're doing. Right. So we ask, we ask this week, how's your faith? Right. And we see in, again, Matthew 14, right that um, Peter's faith was amazing, right? Peter's faith took him out of the boat to walk on water and to stand before Jesus, right? right. So we see that in verse 18, he made sure that he was commanded by Jesus, right? Well, verse, verse 18, in verse 28, in verse 29, right? Jesus kept it short, simple, and told him to go, gave him his heart's desire, Peter's heart's desire at that moment was to walk to Jesus. Yeah, right? he said, come. And he said, come. Answering exactly Peter's heart's desire, right? as he does with us sometimes. And there's no need. If, 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 if you hear, if you spend time with God, then you recognize his voice. My sheep know my voice and they come, right? That's what the word says. So right. you spend time with God, you'll know when it's from God. And it'll be crystal, right? No need for confirmations. No need for outside or third or second Second or third opinions, right. right? God said it, get up and do it, right? And then in verse 30, you know, Peter doubted. He saw the wind, the obstacles, things around him that weren't exactly the way he thought or he didn't notice because before he was, his eyes were on Jesus and now the problems came in, right? So when the doubt and the fear begin to creep, you know, remember to keep focused on Jesus, right? right. You keep focused on Jesus and he will lift you. He will lift you up over the waves, out of the water, out of the troubles, out of the problems, out of all the circumstance. He'll raise you up. Back into the boat. Right. Because because in that this last verse, you know, uh, verse 32. Well, so let's say 31. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And the picture that I'm seeing in this is, so they're, they're standing however far away from the boat. He begins to sing and he's like, oh, why, why did you, why did you doubt? And when he grabs him, right, pulls him up and walks him right back to the boat. And in my mind, Jesus, I mean, Peter probably didn't even realize what was going on because all of a sudden, right, he's focused back on Jesus. Right? And, he, and he's walking on the water again, back to the boat. Back to the boat. But right? he probably doesn't even realize right. that, you know, that, that this has happened. Right. It's almost like that footprints poem. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's almost like when we first met my sister's uh, pit bull ranger and he came running through the door and you didn't realize, but I slid you in front of the door. Oh, no, I did. So, realize. That, you could, so that you could be a buffer between, you know, between me and the dog eating, eating me. <laughs> and a giant pit bull who, who ended up being a giant lap dog. Lap dog. Because all he did was. Lay down on me so that I can pet him, right? But like you know, he brought Jesus back into the boat, and then Peter. Oh, well, Peter. Jesus brought Peter Jesus back into the boat, the boat, and then the storm died out, right? Then Peter was safe again. Everyone that was involved there and was around there with him was safe. So you know, you have to hear from God, spend time with God, so you can recognize His voice. You have to be obedient when He calls you. Right Correct. to do what he asked to do, what he tells you to do, and also to do what you want to do in him for him to glorify him. Right, and then when the doubt and the fear creep in, focus your eyes back on Jesus, yes. and he'll calm the storm. Yes, and he'll he'll uh, and you notice he didn't calm the storm right away. He got him back into the boat before the storm calms. So it it's not that when you put your eyes on Jesus, all of a sudden the storm calms. You still have to make it through the storm to get to that calm place. Um, a lot of times we want to, oh, Jesus saved me. And we want, want him to, to calm everything right away. That's Sometimes it happens, right? But sometimes it's, you still got to walk through that storm. You still got to walk back. But he's he's what? He is with you that whole time. Because, the entire time. Because we focused on him. Because we put our minds and our eyes on him. So, uh, so we're, you know, hey, that's. That's what we got to do. That's, uh, that's, you know, and, and we, and we share this, you know, Hey, listen, I, this is a thing that we, we, we all struggle with. Um, you know, we're not a hundred percent on it, but it's always 
it's always good to be reminded um, these days, especially after we do events that we feel a little down <laughs> because <laughs> it didn't go the way we wanted it to. But, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, hey, get out the boat. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I mean, it's that simple. And then, you know. Uh, step out in faith. Step out in faith. And keep your faith in your heart focused on Jesus. So uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So, uh, hey, friends, family, loved ones, uh, hit us up on the uh, on the comments. Uh, don't forget, um, if you're on SoundCloud listening to this, you can also find us on uh, Google Play uh, Music. Just type in Overflow Podcast, and we're the ones that's got the uh, the phone with the headphones. Because there's another Overflow Podcast. That's a church. Don't listen to them. Listen to us. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, we'll be on iTunes soon. We're waiting to hear back from them. Um, and as always, you can always go to uh, the website. Uh, this is outcry.com. So, hey, we'd love to hear from you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great week coming up. Um, until we meet again and until we talk about other nerdy things that will upset cocoa juice, coconut juice. Coconut juice in um, the background. My name is uh, Joaquin. I'm still Jay. And this is the Overflow Podcast at thisisoutcry.com. Word. Peace.